Today on the EverRide channel, seven riders join me for the first ever schooling weekend. A rally built around fundamentals and basic riding technique. After the drills are done and we're feeling a little more confident, we took some trails to test our limits and a simple schooling weekender becomes a legitimate adventure. Day one, a mellow dirt road to an open field where we'd throw down some cones to get to the drills. Nothing new or groundbreaking, mainly done in a tight figure eight with varying speeds to practice the very basics, you know, balance, body positioning while sitting and standing, during acceleration and braking, turning, ascending and descending hills, feathering the clutch and the throttle, you know, off-road 101. such a small group, it was really nice to help each rider nail down the technique before moving on. Darren and Rick, friends from the icy north of Utah, were both on DR650s. Angie and Darius, originally from Guam, but now just south of me in Vegas, were riding DR200s. Howard and Eli, father and son, flew in from Boston and were riding rented Honda 250Ls. John brought his own bike, a GPX 250, all the way from Seattle, Washington. Every rider was encouraged to really accentuate the body positions to the point of feeling awkward. If you can make it feel awkward during the drills and build that muscle memory, then using the correct positioning while actually riding trails should feel much more natural. And when the riders felt like they'd had enough of the drills, they played around on the natural playgrounds that surrounded our little course. It was a perfect spot for honing skills on different slopes and surfaces, and winter temperatures in the low 50s made for Goldilocks riding weather for low speed practice. So the drills are meant to build skills, but the main thing is building confidence. Confidence in the bike, confidence in your abilities, and confidence that you really can do this. Even more mellow dirt bikes are incredibly capable, and the rider's job is just to be in the right position to let the bike do the work. By the time the day one drills were finished, all seven riders were ready and willing to tackle some gnarlier Badlands trails. The demeanor was altogether different from earlier in the day. When we started, a mellow dirt road with some slick spots had slowed us to a crawl. Just two hours and a few drills later, they were utterly destroying a much tougher double track. Oh man! Oh my gosh! Holy moly, that was the biggest chunk of roost I've ever seen in my life. While painful at first, my arm would feel functional in another half hour, but my arm wasn't the only problem. Despite the meteorite to my arm, having all the proper tools on hand made it one of the smoothest trail tire changes I've ever seen. Once we buttoned it up, we were back on the trail, ready for more. We decided to take trails with a few more climbs and twists, and the group devoured that as well, hungry for any terrain that would test their new skills. The day was coming to a close, but instead of backtracking on what we'd already done, the group opted to take one final challenging route to loop back to town. Little did we know that the recent rains had produced a flash flood, one that we would have to ride through.
Nice, Andy. Nice. You okay? Oh, no. That's just a flowing wash. Whoa! <laughs> There you go, nice. Darius, I haven't had any footage of you, man. I gotta get up there. All right, I'm gonna pass you on the right here. Yep, there you go. Whoa! Good job, good recovery. Good recovery, Darius, nice job. Oh, really? Uh-oh. Oh, crap. Let's uh, get that bike out of the water. Oh. All right, let's do a kickstand turn here. Uh, nope. Ready, one, two, three. <laughs> Ready, go. If somebody gives it front wheel drive, meaning you pull the front wheel, that helps tons. Keep it going. Nicely done. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get this thing to 12 o'clock and just hold it like this for a while, okay? Ready, set, go. Okay, there we go. Go ahead and click that into Go ahead and click that into first. Good little adventure. <laughs> what we've done by turning it backwards is draining everything. Pick up the spark when it started. Let, it, let, let the piston turn over a couple of times to push out the water. Okay. So it's going to be as drained as it's going to be from the back end. So let's go ahead and let it, let it down a little bit. Yep, let's tip it like this. Okay and then uh, give it a little boost. I think it's clear. Yeah, the, the <laughs> plug is clear and... Nice. All right, good, good job. It's All right, cool. so let's put it on reserve to get the bottom, bottom. Um, I think it's in the middle. All right, let's lean it over this way and that we're not getting gas on yeah. the motor. All right. Oh, oh, geez. Oh, there you there go. go. Yeah, that's... It's okay. hot, it's gas. Okay, yep. All right, that's called good. All right, Angie, let's empty these boots. <laughs> no gas, just... Woo, woo. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Whoa! Oh, no! You okay? All right, here, let me pull it up for you. There we go. There we go. All right, try that. I think that should work. Yep. Sweet. Okay. Thank you. You're so welcome. All right. Duct taped rear light. The hardy little Suzuki wasn't about to give up. We drained everything we could drain and fired it up, but water in the gas was proving too much for the little DR200's little carburetor. It was getting darker and colder. Angie was freezing, and the poor little DR was sputtering. So we'd ride the 200 as far as we could, but we used the inReach to call in the support truck, just in case we ran into more problems. On our way out, fate connected us to a lost soul. Alan, a freestyle motocross pilot, was nearly hypothermic. He had been out exploring when he got caught in some thick storms, lost his bearings, and was stranded miles into the desert. He joined our group, borrowed a jacket, and we started our journey home.
was upon us when the rain returned. The water in the gas was proving too hard for the little DR to swallow, and it would barely run. Continuous hammering on the starter button was starting to take its toll on the battery, and the soaking cold took its toll on Angie. Eventually, we stashed the bike, and Angie hopped on the DRZ with me. It was a long, wet, cold ride into the town of Hurricane, complete with driving through muddy rivers which flowed over paved roads. That night, we staggered into the gas station like a litter of soaked kittens. Jess and I arranged for a huge barbecue dinner for the group while she and I ferried Alan home and brought back vehicles to transport the bikes and the riders back to the warmth of the Moto Mansion. The next morning, I was certain that the entire group would decline riding, pack up, head home, and demand refunds. As it turned out, everybody was sore, but in high spirits, excited for another day in the Badlands. So we suited up, put Angie on my son's TTR-125, and headed back into the desert. Beginning of day two, we practiced some more. Line selection, whoops, off-camera riding, loose hill climbs, and of course, descents. It wasn't long before the group was craving another adventure. Unlike yesterday though, they were okay with taking easier, more scenic dirt roads to practice their at-speed turning technique. To be honest guys, I was pretty apprehensive about the first schooling rally. I'm certainly not a professional enduro racer, so would I be an effective enduro teacher? I guess I was never a professional mathematician, linguist, economist, graphic designer, or geographer, but I taught the basics of all those things professionally. But were the drills that I'd selected appropriate for the riders' skill levels? Would they actually improve because of them? Would the riders have fun or get sick of the drills? Well, I'm confident that everybody left the rally a better rider than when they arrived, with a knowledge of the correct techniques to work on and a battery of drills to practice on their own. And four of the seven plan to make a ride out here with me in annual tradition, so I guess it was pretty good. In the end, I personally loved the schooling rally. It took me back to my teaching days, and to see the group go from a very timid pace on a wide, easy dirt road to a nice clip on much harder terrain was immensely satisfying. But to see the smiles on their faces and hear the confidence in their voices was even better. If you would like to attend a schooling rally like this one, or a scenic or shred rally, check out everideadv.com shop, or just click the link in the description. We've got a few scheduled from now until May 2019, and we're currently planning the schedule for Fall 2019 as well. So if you want to brush up on some skills, you're welcome to come out. Or if you'd like to brush up on those skills on your own, check out the videos to the right. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you as always to my good friends and patrons who make these videos possible. Without them, it wouldn't exist. Much love, Everide out.